Hi friends, if like me, you like to collect vintage RPGs, I want to warn you about something that looks a little scammy, at least in my mind, a little bootleggy. So we're gonna explore it and um, you can make your own decision. Anyway, if you don't know, if you're new here, I'm Joe. I've been role playing for over 45 years now and I don't call myself an expert. That seems weird to call someone an expert role player. Um, no, instead I just like to be your like online gaming buddy. You know, that old dude you talk about gaming stuff with. Anyway, the game we're talking about this week, and actually I went into my collection and I dug out my copy. By the way, if you're listening to this on the podcast, this might be a more visual than normal episode. And for that, I apologize, but I think it will still be very listenable. I'm going to try to explain everything. Anyway, so what I have here, wrapped in plastic, is my copy of Star Trek Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier. This is the very first licensed Star Trek RPG that was ever published. Right here in my grubby little hands. It was published by Heritage Models. And not only is it significant for being the first Star Trek RPG, but Heritage Models, I mean, most people don't know that name anymore. They were like a miniatures company. But when Dave Arneson left TSR, he ended up working for Heritage Models. The story is a lot longer than that. And uh, if you want to know more, I highly recommend John Peterson's book called Game Wizards. And this was supposed to be one of the products that Dave Arneson oversaw. And he wanted to bring in John Snyder, who was one of the uh, Twin Cities gamers that gamed at Arneson's table, uh, later went on to co-write Adventures in Fantasy with Arneson, and uh, then went off to Avalon Hill and wrote Powers and Perils. But uh, anyway, he wanted to bring him on to oversee this product um, and other things. But Arneson was much better at thinking about things than doing things and so that never happened and so Heritage ended up bringing this guy Michael J. Scott although um, I have come across some articles about him in some old game magazines and his name is actually like Michael Scott Trutrick, Kutrick something like that in those uh, articles so it's curious anyway uh, and rather than start from scratch, he just went based on an earlier game that he had designed for game science called S Space Patrol. <laughs> had to think for a second there. Um, yeah, Space Patrol. And he just gave it a light touch up. And then this isn't about the game. So I'll, I'm just going to gloss over. I should probably do a future episode about this. Uh, later on, um, Heritage lost the license. And actually, Heritage folded is what happened. And he went on and he updated it and Game Science published that as Star Patrol. And then Game Science kind of gave up on that and he published it as Starfleet Voyages uh, with all the Star Trek stuff taking off. So anyway, so that's the game. So, but from a collector's point of view, um, it's interesting because again, very first Star Trek RPG and Heritage, of course, has that link with uh, Arneson and all that. Uh, Heritage is who printed Adventures in Fantasy for Arneson. That was his RPG after D&D. That's what he said. This is what D&D was supposed to be before Gygax ruined it. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any love lost between those two at that time frame. Anyway, none of that matters. Star Trek Adventures in the Final Frontier. Oh, sorry, Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier. So, you want to buy a copy of this. It's not the hardest thing to find, not the easiest thing to find. I would say it's somewhere in the middle. So, you're looking along on eBay. And you might come across a listing. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm showing you the listing right now. So, the listing says, Star Trek RPG Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier Rules 1978. And he's selling it for 40 bucks and about another five bucks for shipping. It's listed as pre owned. Okay. So you click on that listing and you open it up, and you see that it's being uh, sold by someone named. J 
But the next thing you know, when you look at the picture, is that there's a big crease on the side. This is a hardcover book. Now, this book was published in 1978. The only thing in hardcover in 1978 was the first uh, AD&D books. Uh, Monster Manual was out, I think. Player Chain book was just coming out. A little company like Heritage Models was not making anything in hardcover. And if you see my copy here, or if you listen on the podcast, take my word for it, this is a cardboard copy, softbound. Pretty much, if you ever seen the Holmes edition of d d it's the same type of book. It's a cardboard cover, staple bound in the middle with all the pages, about 40-ish pages. It's not hardcover, and they couldn't afford to make hardcover stuff back then. So that's a warning sign right there. Actually, that's probably a big warning sign. If you look at the cover, well, the cover is very different. Again, this is what the cover looks like if you can't see it. <laughs> uh, it's just this big purple planet in the word Star Trek up top and Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier goes around the planet. And very little letter it says copyright 1978 Paramount up top. On the bottom it says written by Michael J. Scott. <laughs> Michael J. Michael Scott. Why does the office keep popping into this podcast? Um, if you've ever seen The Office, you know that Michael Scott was the boss for the first umpteen seasons of that show. Uh, and uh, just like a couple episodes ago, I mentioned the place where Jim and Pam had their uh, rehearsal dinner. <laughs> and um, a few episodes back before that, I was talking about like how Michael Scott talked about Die Hard. Anyway, no relation, different Michael Scott. <laughs> It's just funny that it keeps popping up. Um, but yeah, so that's the cover. This cover, the one on eBay, is still a purple planet, but it's been kind of squished and it almost looks like it was moved to the corner to get the words out of the way. And then an Enterprise was stuck on top of it. So the cover is not right. The seller has a picture of the back cover. What's interesting about the back cover is... It's exactly the same back here, you know, has Heritage Models, their old address and phone number back in Dallas. But beside it, it has a barcode. Now, this is 1978. I'm not going to say no one was using barcodes. I think the first barcode used was in 74. But in the gaming hobby, I mean, the first few letters of a barcode are a unique code uh, for each company. And... Uh, yeah, back in 1978, that one. My copy does not have a barcode <laughs> on it. This one does. And if you zoom in on that picture and you look at the barcode, like the last nine digits are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Warning flags all over the place. So I said, you no, know, in the listing that it sets the specifics as pre-owned. When you click on it here, You'll see that the condition now says used and the seller's note says like new. And then the item description from the seller says Star Trek RPG Adventure and Gaming The Final Frontier 1978 condition is used shipped with USPS Media Mail. Now the next two lines, I want to say the first time I looked at this, they weren't there, but they're there now. So it changes things if you bother to read this far down. But what they say is drive through RPG POD. For those that don't know, POD, it's not a pod like a podcast, <laughs> um, is print on demand. So what's happening is when you order this book, he goes out and he has one printed and he has that shipped to you. That means that if you are buying this as a collector, this isn't it. This is not a real copy from 1978. I don't know how it can be used. I don't know how it can be pre-owned. I don't know how it can only be like new if it's being printed on demand and shipped to you. I, I don't know about you, but to me that just sounds sketchy as all heck, right? Um, he says two to four weeks for delivery, hardback. We talked about why that's weird. He says, PM with any questions. He says, due to current world situations, all items have a longer than normal handling time. That's not to say all items will take as long, but 
it helps to buffer any unforeseen circumstances. Please don't bid if you are impatient or need the item without any delay. Thank you and sorry for any inconvenience this may cause. Thanks. I remember that from the first time I saw this because I was like, he's trying to say it's going to be a shipping delay when really what we're waiting for is the print on demand. And nowhere does he really say print on demand. He says POD. So we don't know what that stands for. I don't, this strike, I can't say because I don't know the guy. <laughs> it strikes me that he's trying to sell this like it is a collector's item. Um, and what's actually funny is today, of course, things change. There's a real copy, an original, on there for six bucks less than this fake, this bootleg. Um, and then that's, is it a bootleg? That's the next question. Because then I was like, well, maybe, just maybe, somehow or whatever his name was. Um, maybe he, he actually has the rights to do this. Maybe he contacted Paramount or maybe, because I know when Paramount made their contract with Starfleet Battles that there was no expiration date and that's how come they're still publishing and that's how come um, Prime Directive RPG, you can still buy it if that's your thing. It's far too... Uh, rules crunchy for my taste but uh, yeah that's how they can still make those because at that time Paramount was like this is an old TV show that no one's watched and well they watch it but you know that nothing new is being made so we're not going to bother to expire it in 1978 I don't know what the terms of the contract were so maybe he somehow was connected with Heritage although that name doesn't match any of the names I know from Heritage but yeah whatever uh, Stranger Things could happen right so maybe maybe this is legit right maybe he just has the rights and he's making these <laughs> new old stock copies um and that would be kind of cool i could have a hard hardbound copy um there's also a screenshot not a screenshot he, he has a picture of what the pages look like well one page and i compared that to my original and it looks like it looks like he just took a scan of the original books and put it there um where that section is on the page is exactly where it is on the original. So I want to say that he grabbed a copy of an original uh, PDF copy, like off the web, and uh, just uploaded it to Drive Through and has it done. I looked on Drive Through, this game doesn't show up at all if you do a search for it. So, uh, but I think it is possible on Drive Through to upload something and only do them yourself, you know, not make it publicly available. Um, so I suspect that's what he's doing. Yeah, I, so like I said, there's a scenario that I could see it being possible that this is, is legit. I just don't think that's the case. And to further my claim, <laughs> I clicked on his name to see what other listings he has. So in addition to selling Star Trek, the 1978 RPG adventure gaming, he is selling a second edition Gamma World hardcover Again, he says drive through RPG. He says print on demand. Well, he doesn't say print on demand. He says pod. So if you look on drive through RPG, WotC legitimately has a copy up there. You can buy second edition Gamma World, but you can't buy print. You can only buy PDF. I can't see WotC saying, yeah, we're not going to sell you a print copy, but we'll let someone else do it. I, again, I don't think this is legit. And you, you can't get the rights to Gamma World. WotC has that locked up, right? Or Jim Ward does if WotC doesn't. Uh, but other games he has, he has uh, The Orcs by, uh, for Warhammer 40K. He has uh, first edition hardcover Gamma World, third edition Gamma World, uh, third edition Boot Hill, Fasta Star Trek. He's doing all these as hardcover. They're all print on demand. I mean, if you want these for your own personal whatever, you know, want to see what the rules are like. Um, so if you know what you're getting into, I suppose this is okay. If he was more upfront and said, you know, new copy, whatever. Um, but let your conscience be a guy too, because I do not think that these are authorized legitimate reprints. I am half tempted to report him to eBay for selling a uh, bootleg or counterfeit stuff. But 
Do I have the right to do that? I, is that the right holder's right? Maybe I notified the right holder. I don't know. So instead, I made a podcast episode. <sighs> Tell me what you think. Is this morally legitimate in your mind? I, I don't think it is. Um, we've seen the community go... I was going to say ballistic, but that's overselling it a bit. We've seen the community get upset, and I believe uh, rightfully so, when people have taken someone else's Creative Commons work, just changed the name and put it out for sale on their own. Um, although I think under, uh, not Creative Commons, uh, OGL, under the OGL, I think that's perfectly legit. But being legally legit and morally legit, two different things. And so... If you have, if you have an old out of print RPG that you just happen to have a PDF for, is it morally legit to buy a copy from this guy? Um, but even at that point, why bother? Why not just take it down to? I was going to say Kinkos, like there's a Kinkos anymore. Take it down to your local copy shop and have your own copy printed. Uh, cut out the middleman. Yeah, I know it won't be hardcover. Um, yeah, let, let me know what you think about this. I, I don't like it. <laughs> That's where I stand. I don't like it. Um, yeah. Am I, am I overboard? Let me know. So yeah, to let me know, just leave a comment down below if you're on YouTube. If you want to call, if you're on YouTube or listen to the podcast, <laughs> uh, the feedback line is 562-RPG-CAST. That's 562-774-2278. If you want to send email, it's feedback at decahedron.com. Remember to spell decahedron with a K. And if you want to do voice, you can record it on whatever and uh, send it as an attachment in the email. Um, or what's the other? Oh, uh, say hi.chat slash decahedron. Uh, that's just a website you can go to and it'll let you leave a voice message in case you're like overseas or something, don't want to make a U.S. call. That's everything I have. Thanks for watching or listening. And until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Dekihedron RPG podcast. Please come back again to the Dekihedron RPG podcast.